Clifford, thanks for holding on. Go ahead with your question for the three candidates. Yeah, thank you. I understand that uh, 9 or $10 million was spent on buying up property in the West Harbor before uh, it was really picked as a site. And, uh, I mean, I didn't want it as a site neither. And also, I want to know about the bridge that was built across the highway. Uh, I call it the bridge to nowhere. That was another $9 million. Uh, I want to know if those candidates think that that was wisely spent, or should that uh, 9 or, or 19 or $20 million been used somewhere else? Thank you. Thank you, Clifford. Uh, we'll begin with Bob Bertina. Well, the bridge is, <laughs> that had been a problem for me from the beginning. That bridge that you're seeing going across from the Rennie Street dump to the beach trail could have been a $1 million bridge. It could have been a $3 million accessible bridge. But somebody decided they wanted to have an 8 or $9 million fancy bridge. Anybody who thinks that's a wise spending of money, uh, well, I have nothing to say. Larry Deany? Apparently we've spent $10.5 million in the West Harbor buying up properties. And go there now. I think is it called the Tiffany neighborhood. Go there now, and you'll see boarded-up uh, buildings where people actually used to live. You'll see boarded-up buildings where there were actual businesses there. And this was all to accommodate a stadium that never materialized. $10.5 million is the tip of the iceberg because I read a city report that said for residential, you're going to have to spend up to $33 million cleaning up the contaminated sites. So that's a, a considerable investment that may pay off in the future. But but look at the sewers that are still overflowing. Look at the poverty rate that's still on the rise. Look at the uh, at the stadium location now on Longwood, which is $70 million plus short of what we need to do a construction there. And you'll see, add that to the $30 million overexpenditure at the City Hall renovation, and you'll see that... This council has been spending money literally um, like drunken sailors. And Fred Eisenberger. Uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how much work uh, Mr. Deany has done in the four years that he's been away. It's, uh, it's astounding. Uh, you know, clearly this council's done an awful lot of good work, and I think it's important that uh, people understand that the, uh, the bridge project was actually a, uh, uh, an investment that was made by the province of Ontario. They, they picked that project. They, they decided that that was a, a project worth doing. It's supported by a, a number of um, uh, members of council, and it's considered to be a gateway entrance into the city of Hamilton. Uh, but the other side of the coin, the, uh, the West Harbor lands are strategically important. In fact, we, we purchased the Ream property, and we, we've been pursuing the Ream property quite some time because it's, a, it's an area of uh, our, our waterfront that we want to develop and grow. Uh, it is, uh, you know, it's part of a, a land banking strategy that's important for the city of Hamilton if we're going to have some, some strategic assets that we can actually develop and, uh, and enhance. And uh, I think over the long run, uh, the West Harbor development will happen. Uh, in concert with uh, Ivor Wind Precinct Development, which uh, if, if, the, if the stadium comes down, that's a, a great opportunity for us to do uh, reurbanization development there as well with commercial and uh, residential. So if you look at all of that, that's, a, that's assessment growth that uh, is, is going to help defray the costs uh, to, to uh, residential taxpayers. The more assessment growth we have, uh, the less the pressure is on the residential taxpayer and the, the better our city becomes. Thank you. Uh, next question. <laughs> With respect to LRT Transit, what are your viewpoints in making this a reality for the city of Hamilton? And simply put, can we afford it? And we'll begin with Larry Deany. Well, I, I'm in favor of LRT. Um, it, there are some challenges, though. Uh, certainly the cost is one of them. It's a billion-dollar project just for one of the lines, whether it's the east-west line or the, uh, or the north-south line. Uh, and we're hoping that the province will kick in money. We're hoping that they might pay, and the feds might pay the entire cost, but in other municipalities, they've paid 80%. So we still have to come up with a couple hundred million dollars. The mistake that the city is making is twofold. One, they're excluding the suburbs, and yet they're going to turn around and ask the suburbs to pay for LRT, and some of the suburbs don't care for LRT at all. And the second mistake is that they're not considering the what I think is the best route to connect, if you're going to go east-west, which is Barton Street, that needs more economic turnaround than any other district and street in the whole city. Thank you. Fred Eisenberger? Um, I'm, I was happy to put uh, light rail transit on the agenda. I worked uh, aggressively with the Metrolinx board to, uh, to come up with the, uh, the big move, which is a, a, a regional transportation plan, which I think uh, is forward-looking. Uh, you know, it's all fun and well to look at today and say, well, it doesn't look like we need it, but uh, congestion is growing, and I think we need to deal with that moving forward. Uh, in Toronto and Durham and York, <clears throat> the uh, Metrolinx and the province have paid 100% of the cost, including 
uh, the study costs for uh, putting an LRT system into into place. Uh, there are major benefits to to come out of that. We were uh, given three million dollars to do the study to have a look at where it would work best, and that's uh, ongoing right now. And uh, and we are poised uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the next upcoming uh, provincial budget to uh, to get a, a significant portion of the funding in place to get started on a, a higher order of public transportation. Two major benefits is uh, better better cleaner air in our environment uh, because it's an electrified system. Uh, we can take the buses that are currently operating on the uh, in the lower city and move them out and expand our service to the suburban areas uh, much more aggressively. <laughs> And uh, the economic uplift that comes with uh, an LRT, fixed LRT line around that corridor is significant. In Portland, they have a, they've had a 2,000% increase in terms of assessment growth in and around their LRT corridors. And that is uh, the kind of growth you want to have. You want to have smart growth, uh, reurbanize our cities, stop urban sprawl, and provide people some choices in terms of quicker, easier, cleaner public transportation. Thank you. And Bob Bertina. Yes, I support LRT. What I'm not supporting is the um, lack of harmony between our transit planning and our land use planning. Council has just approved the Airtropolis. We're looking at an LRT that's going to go from Eastgate to McMaster, and we're looking at employment growth around the airport. We have to find a route that will take workers from the uh, lower, older city up to those lands. So if you work on Ruth or Dalkeith, or if you live there, how do you get up to a job in the airport precinct? You're going to be traveling for an hour and a half on buses. So we really have to re-examine the routing and determine that a link to the airport, if that's where we're going with our uh, employment lands, has to be uh, the priority. We're, we're making decisions that don't coordinate one with another, and, and that's wasting money and wasting time. Thank you. A quick follow-up question uh, on that email, and this is another one from uh, Gary because uh, that also responds to LRT, and I think BJ in the previous email touched on this too. We've, uh, we'll get a quick answer from all of you on this. Uh, all of you have suggested LRT is essential to the city in one way, shape, or form. However, it's predicated on the fact that the provincial government come up with the necessary funding. If they don't, and the city has to kick in money, is this a dead issue? And we'll start with Fred Eisenberger. <clears throat> well, it's certainly more complicating for me, especially when they've uh, provided 100% funding in Toronto, Urim, and York. So, I mean, they've even, even provided the study money to actually get us to that point, and they've done that in Hamilton as well. So I have an expectation that uh, the, it'll be 100% funding for a basic service. Now, if we want to enhance the stops, there are ways that we can do that, working with the private sector, and that's exactly what they're doing in Toronto, that the private sector would come in and look at a station and say, we can put commercial development on that station and help pay for the funding to, to make that happen. So, uh, no, I, th I think they, they, uh, we are in line for, our, for all the funding we need, and then we need to be creative and innovative and work with the private sector to create other investments that actually defray the cost of the entire system. So I think, uh, I think there's great opportunity here, and I think 100% uh, funding, I think, is the, uh, the bottom line for the city of Hamilton. Bob Bertina. Well, anybody who thinks that we're going to get LRT without uh, contributing in some fashion is, well, that's not on. We're, we're going to be paying something. So we need to make that clear. Let's, let's have that out with our uh, provincial uh, partners and see what, it is, what is required from the city of Hamilton to make this project go forward. And Larry Deany? Um, yes, we're, we're not being honest with the taxpayer. If we, if we pretend that we're going to get 100% funding, it's not going to cost us anything. That is just not the way it's going to unfold. Uh, and if you look at the, talk to city staff that are managing this process, they will tell you that. Um, also, I was told months ago by a member of the MetroLinx board that, that are the funding um, uh, uh, parameters for, for LRT that uh, this is a competitive process and that Hamilton is asleep of the switch. We're not going after the money. We're not doing what other communities are doing in terms of the background work to make sure that we line up. And the Spectator uh, wrote a front-page story on this, and uh, uh, some folks from the chamber said the very same thing. Again, we're a day late and a dollar short.